So, Falcon and the Winter Soldier is effectively, it is not officially Captain America 4 because Captain America 4 has already been, has now been announced featuring Anthony Mackie as Captain America, which is the title which he takes, which he claims again at the last episode of the series, complete with the show, officially retitling it's, itself as Captain America and the Winter Soldier. So, Captain America, like, superhero comics have always, always been political. Captain America comics, like, if any comic has ever been officially considered, like, oh, this is the political comic, like, these comics are, like, all comics are political, these ones more so. Captain America comics definitely fit the end, these ones more so. All the way up to the first issue of Captain America having Steve Rogers punching Adolf Hitler in the face in an issue that was published before the U.S. had entered World War II. And actually, I'm going to look this up live just to confirm. Confirm this first appearance of Captain America was... Captain America Comics number one nineteen nineteen forty one. 1941. Um, so we are, and, and I believe the Germans had already invaded France at this time. Um, World War II timeline. So by... So by yep. So it, by this point, Germany. So at this point, Germany had already invaded Western Europe. Um, March nineteen forty one was the cover date. Um, by this point, Bulgaria had joined. At this point, the um, Africa Corps had been sent to North Africa. And the Soviet Union had not been invaded yet. So we are months, we are uh, several months away from the bombing of Pearl Harbor. And we'd already had the Withdrawal from we've already had uh, the miracle at Dunkirk. So, yeah. So at that, so again, Captain America always been political, in various forms. So we have Anthony Mackie as Fal starting out as the Falcon and later on in the series claiming the title of Captain America. And now, theoretically, Captain America 4, you could just have Falcon, or you could just have um, Sam Wilson as Cap, just, just from the get-go. And I think a lot of people would just buy it, but I do recall, but I, I think what this show is, like, I didn't agree how the show came to be, is a way to kind of get across what is what is Anthony Mackie as Captain America going to be like? What is his type of not necessarily what what type of stories is will he tell will be told with this character? But what is like how does he make Captain America being Captain America his own and separate and distinct from Chris Evans when like well, like you look at Chris Evans' social media presence, especially during the Trump administration, um, Chris Evans was Cap. I don't just mean this like, oh, he had the body and the build and presented himself, um, like you could like as being as a jovial, as a affable person, the same way that Steve Rogers is, but like Chris Evans was Cap. Chris Evans stood up to voices of authority who use their power and privilege to abuse others, to spread hatred and racism and bigotry in the ways that, ex that exactly Steve Rogers did and does in, com did in the comics, did and does in the comics. And Chris does it in real life. 
And so by contrast, and so those are big shoes to fill. And on top of that, while both Bucky Barnes as the Winter Soldier or Winter Soldier era Bucky Barnes and Sam Wilson have carried the shield in the comics, none of them have ever really had the same length of a run. Like they could, none of them could have the same length of run that Steve Rogers had, even if um, Steve Rogers at no point ever reclaimed the shield after either his death in civil war or his retirement leading to him handing over the shield to um, Bucky, not Bucky, to, to Falcon in, I want to say it was Heroes Were Born, not Heroes Were Born, in um, Heroic Era or whatever, when that happened, uh, when he got aged by, um, when the like super soldier serum started to wear off some and the, the age, the years caught up with him in a rush. All that happened. So... With all of that, it, on the other hand, like I do recall, after Avengers Endgame came out, more than a few people saying, hey, we dig Sam getting the shield, but why not Bucky? Either because Bucky got the shield first after Steve, or because the... Um, or other factors up to and including a certain degree of racial prejudice. Uh, even an, even not necessarily a deliberately malevolent one, but just an unexamined racial prejudice. And this show definitely feels like the... And this is why Sam Wilson and this is why Anthony Mackie are perfect to be the next Captain America. Um, and they why they are the Captain America we need, and we do this through like is our political story through the framework of the world several months after the blip, trying to adjust with varying degrees of failure. Where you have half of the world's population has been back after five years gone, after five years missing, and with a group called the. Global Resource Council being basically appointed to try and straighten this immensely massive fuster cluck out. And directly failing. And with a group, a extremist group, I'm not going to call them terrorists. Um, they use some terroristic tactics at point the series, but I, as Cap points out in the climax of the series, terrorist is often a term that we use to dismiss the objections of, to dismiss the points of view of others. And we use it to use their tactics to dismiss, to determine, to dismiss that perhaps that there may be some element of grievance there that is worth, that is worth paying attention to. And in this case, the extremist group, the flanks, the flag smashers has a, Object, has objections that have merit, which are that they are remainers. They are people who were left behind after the snap and moved into new countries and new positions and new jobs and did and picked up the work that was available after the snap happened. And now that the blip in turn has recurred, returned and all these people have come back, um, they are basic. These people are being basically picked, kicked to the curb, st stuck into refugee camps, and being presumably shipped back to whatever their old home was, even if their old home is not actually equipped to handle the massive influx of all these returning refugees. And that's, and that's where the political things get interesting, because it is, because things get, this is a complicated issue. Over the past several weeks since this episode has come out, I have been paying attention to discussions on this on a couple of forum sites that I follow and chat rooms and that sort of thing. And basically the general consensus that is had is that like the GRC isn't like from what we see of the GRC, they're not great. 
they're kind of assholes. Um, and their tactics are, they are not as aggressively violent as the tactics of the Flag Smashers, but they could very easily get that get there in the not-too-distant future, even without the Flag Smashers existing. Um, because if their, their plan is to basically, is, for lack of a better term, using troops to force people to go back home, which oftentimes, would generally not a thing that ends well. I'm not going to say oftentimes, but generally, to, to, to assume, assume that whenever you're having people doing that, it, ne it doesn't work well. Um, and is generally not a good look. In fact, not even generally. It's just not a good look, period. So, there's that. On the other hand, the Flag Smashers, we, over the course of this series, we start off with them doing, okay, they're stealing medic medicines and food supplies and that sort of thing from warehouses where it's just sitting there and not going out to the refugee camps and redistributing it to the people who need it and that's awesome that's that's uh, that that's that's something we sympathize with to to okay and now we're tying up the guards and blowing up the place behind them and killing them and kill and from a person who has had to take med because my major in medical informatics they require you to take a certain degree of um medical biology classes and that sort of thing related to human anatomy and that sort of thing and what's dealt with in a medical environment uh, because your support could be supporting IT stuff in hospitals. And so they talk about the ways people can get hurt and how you and, and the impacts it have and the ways people can die. And long story short, it's like if um, Kyrie Morgenthau, the head of the, or Carly Morgenthau, the head of the um, Flag Smashers, or we're going to call her Flag Smasher, um, was going to, you know, kill a bunch of people who are guards and minions of the GRC for their complicity in the regime. That's actually a pretty crappy way to do it. I don't mean that in the sense of, uh, it, I don't mean that in the sense of it's not going to kill them, though certainly some of them probably could have survived, but in the sense of if you want to do this in a way of, oh, we are pragmatic and we're, we're killing them to send a message, but we're not trying to be overly cruel, blowing the thing up while you're leaving, when you have the opportunity to kill them in quicker and more certain methods, is probably actually better than just, you know, like more, or at least more, like, I'm not going to say merciful because the merciful thing to do is let them go is disarm them, tell them to run off and then leave yourself right before you leave. But if you're, if, if you have to kill them, there are faster ways because explosions can, among other things, um, concussive force can cause traumatic internal bleeding, which can cause a slow lingering death, um, scar, um, the burns from the heat and flame of the explosion can cause, um, can become infected and lead to sepsis. Um, in addition to just the general long-term pain from the burns. Also, I had uh, was in a D&D &D group with an, emergent, with an emergency room doctor or a person who had, a, a general practitioner who had done emergency room work and talked about this. Explosions suck. Okay? Explosions suck. If you, like, getting caught in an explosion is bad. I, I feel like this isn't something I should need to have to tell you, but being caught in an explosion is bad and is a and is generally unless one of the after effects of the explosion is something that kills you quickly it's a bad way it's a bad way to go okay so and on the top of all of this we get this larger conflict thing going on we have the more personal issues with Sam Sam being a returnee Sam Wilson, the Falcon, being a returnee, being trusted with the shield. And the fun of being near freeways that there's sirens nearby that might be caught up by the microphone, I don't know. Um is a returnee. He and Steve trusted him with the shield. And he and basically the, the fundamental focus of this part of the story with the Falcon, with, with Sam Wilson, is 
what it means to be black to be the black Captain America, basically. And we get into this through Sam and Bucky dealing with this conflict between the GRC and the Flag Smashers, part the first. Um, and with Sam's background as a as a counselor, uh, trying to use that to help find a peaceful, reasonable solution on the one side. With Bucky also being heavily involved because the Flag Smashers, several of the numbers, have had access to a stable super soldier serum, which has Bucky concerned for legitimate reasons from his experience, you know, as the Winter Soldier, a brainwashed killer created by Hydra. So that's not good. And on top of this, with Falcon, not feel, with Sam not feeling comfortable being Captain America, particularly at first, and initially electing, rather than being, than accepting the mantle of Cap, to retire them, the, at least his intent is to retire the mantle and donate the shield to the Smithsonian Institution. Only for the U.S. military to yoink it out of these institution and give the give the shield and the moniker to John Walker, who Collington comic fans will recognize as the man who becomes the U.S. agent, otherwise known as Big Dumb Asshole Captain America. By way of explanation, um, like Steve Rogers. And this is also where you get the, the racial, dyna the political dynamics of this. I remember when the first Captain America movie came out and leading into the Avengers, the, my, my European friends and my non-comic reading fans are, oh, Captain America, he's a big, dumb, jingoistic character. And a lot of people, their first thought went to actually the Ultimates and that book's version of Captain America created by Mark Millar who is big, dumb, jingoistic Captain America. The... Whereas the books, whereas like, 616 Steve Rogers, 616 Cap is respectful, is like is a person who is, who aspires to represent what America wants it wants to be. The the ideals of America, not the reality. Um, that represents truth. That when they talk, when you talk about truth, justice in the American way, or just truth and justice, uh, like represent, supports that. Steve Rogers, or to put things another way, um, when we had like the initial, like Steve Rogers would stand with, like when we had the the, the protests which are still ongoing over with the protests with um the killing of black people people of color by police officers um oftentimes police officers who, who like oftentimes killing of just of people who are unarmed um or having mental health crises or even stuff like police officers claiming that, oh, I, I went for my taser and I accidentally pulled my gun by mistake. Uh-huh. Um, in all of those instances, by the way, Steve Rogers would side with the protesters, would not be siding with the cops. Um, Steve Rogers, like, all, more than Spider-Man, has always kind of been painted as the moral compass of the Marvel Universe. Except for when we had alternate universe Hydra Cap brought over by the use of a cosmic cube, but Nick Spencer can go do an anatomical impossibility. <clears throat> In any case, that's like that's the reality of Steve Ro uh, of Steve Rogers in the comics and what they presented to the TV screen. Um, the U.S. agent, uh, Frank, 
Frank Walker. He is the otherwise does that guy. I always say that effing guy. We save that we save that effing guy for Henry Lew, for for Henry Peter Gyrink. Um, but Frank Walker is the big dumb asshole. Captain America. He's big. He's brash. He barges in without thinking things through. He li he throws shield first, asks questions later. He prefers to punch rather than to talk. He's um he assumes that because he's wearing the uniform of Captain America, then he is in the right, and he is the right person, and you should trust him, and why don't you trust him? Why don't why aren't you listening to me? Why aren't you deferring to me? He he's he's the entitled American in particular, he's the white male entitled American in a nutshell. And he's played remarkably well. He's played incredibly well by Wyatt Russell, um, the son of Kurt Russell. And like he just nails the part. Like that's not a slide against Wyatt Russell of oh you play big dumb uh you, you play big dumb loud assholes well. Because I mean that's kind of also what um who Kurt Russell played in Big Trouble in Little China. Jack Burton was a big, dumb, loud kind of asshole, uh, who was the actually the sidekick of the movie, not the hero. So that that works. Um and so it's an interesting so that gets the other interesting dynamic. Especially when we get to a later scene in the in the series, where John Walker, in the cap uniform with the shield, kills a guy, beats an unarmed surrendering uh, flag smasher to death with the shield, and he does it while being filmed with cell phone cameras. It doesn't take 10 minutes. But it's one of those things, particularly considering that the showrunner of this show was also like the head writer and showrunner of Empire. Um, I mean, that's not an accident. And particularly considering that basically from there, John Walker, um, Walker's arc or career arc is the career arc of... A lot of police officers who kill people, who kill black people, unarmed black people, not just being, honestly, being black people in general, but especially, like, especially what happens to unarmed black people in the line of duty, which is they don't face criminal charges. They get, if, if they get fired, they get hired at another police department, in some cases, even in the suburbs of the major city that they were working at at the time. And then they just sh get shuffled around. What happened with the case of George Floyd, there was a lot of pleasant surprise about it as far as for the, the, the sentencing of George Floyd's kill, or, or, or the, the verdict for George Floyd's killer, as this recording hasn't been sentenced yet. Um, but there was a lot of surprise about it because... That's usually not whatever ha what happens, and like, I don't think the showrunners expected that episode to come out so close to the um, conclusion of the George Floyd trial, and but it's certainly like this is a show that is in dialogue very much with the dynamics of how people how America has treated its black population, and th and part of this also is through the third part of the story, which is. The, or the, the third major axis of Sam Wilson's narrative, which is him learning about Isaiah Bradley. Long-term Marvel Comics fans will recognize the name of Isaiah Fad Bradley as the main character in the miniseries Truth, Red, White, and Black about a group of black soldiers who were subjected to experimentation 
on an attempt to create or recreate the super soldier serum um, in reference to the Tuskegee experiment that was done on a lot of black GIs after the Second World War, which was a reprehensible thing. And I can remember the fact that I'm already running an hour in length. Um, I'd get more into that as far as what happened there. And so you have this aspect of you have this person who was already a veteran um, when before he was experimented on to recreate an attempt to recreate the super soldier serum. And then when it worked on him, and after he did a, a heroic act that is comparable to those that were done, that, that Steve did, in fact, identical to the one Steve did, which was rescuing a bunch of fellow soldiers um, from behind enemy lines against orders to do so, something that Steve did in Captain America, uh, the first Avenger. The response for him is to basically lock him up and experiment on him more, not just by the government, but also by Hydra. And which is in turn how this new formula ended up in circulation. And that, and so the, the, it leads kind of the question, Cap, like, as far as for or say, Sam becoming Cap, is Isaiah, basically his perspective is, this is what, like, or as he says outright in there is, um, America would never accept uh, Black Captain America. And... And would, as a black man, would you accept, like, as a, would a self-respecting black man accept the honor if it was given? On the one side. On the other side, you have the U.S. government deciding, nah, we're going to, like, rather than respecting the wishes of a black man to have the mantle of Captain America retired, we're going to, we're going to take it and give it to this asshole who is the exact opposite of everything that Steve Rogers represented as Captain America and as, um, like, as a hero. And so, on this, in fact, honestly, like, even with the, the original depiction, introduction, rather, of U.S. agent of, or I should say, of uh, Frank Walker, or sorry, Don Walker as cap in marvel comics they explicitly have it in the storyline that falcon was considered and rejected because they thought america wasn't ready for a black captain america back in uh 1980 uh 1987 when that storyline happened so this leads to kind of go like, oh, to basically ultimately a situation where Sam effectively goes, all right, like I will not accept being Captain America. The, I will not wait for the government to grant me the honor of being Captain America, especially when Steve already endorsed me for the role. So I'm going to take it back. And I think, and like that's kind of the narrative core of the story is in terms of the the racial dynamics of it there of like when we get to Sam's speech like get first big Captain America speech at the end of the series there is like the only thing he said is look you you're going to hate me for being for for being here just for being here there are people there who hate me for that and I can't stop them from doing that, but I'm, I'm going to do the work. In fact, that, that's the kind of the other, like, and the people, the GRC also need to do the work to solve this problem because it's not because things aren't as complicated. Things are more complicated than they used to be with, because the problem of half a million people coming back from the dead, not in the zombie manner, um, 
but in the walking around human being as if they'd only been gone for seconds, as far as they're concerned, uh, is a big deal and is not an easy problem to solve. And this kind of degree also leads, this leads me to where Captain America and the Falcon stumbles. And that is the blip is a hairy furball, is, is, is a big old hairy mess. It's a big hair, the big giant hairball in, in your shoe mess. This is the kind of analogies you come up with when you have a cat. You have cats. Um, it is, it is ugly. It is a pain to clean up, and it is. It may be like actually, it is. Le it is more complicated than cleaning up a hairball that has been coughed up in your shoe. Um, but it is a complicated problem, and like to put this another way, I guess is this feels like what the focus of She-Hulk is going to be is like, uh, or a big part of the focus of what the She-Hulk she TV, uh, Marvel, uh, Disney Plus series is going to be is because like several billion people who were dead for five years, which is normally the amount of time that it takes for a person to be declared illegally dead. Um, suddenly are now not only not legally dead, but are walking around, want to know who's in our, who's this person in my apartment, and can I have my job back, please? And that's a very complicated mess to work out in the, or work out. Like, this is sort of thing where, like, law, or, like, the, the law of the, of the multiverse, law and capes, I forgot the name of the blog is, um, is, like, I want to look up their article to, to see what they scholarship they figured out on this, but I'm fully willing to expect to look this up, and it's gonna be a, and it's gonna be a one sentence article or one sentence post, which is the fuck I know. This is unprecedented in the like. This is truly unprecedented in the history of the of law. For anything remotely like this. Like, there are, like, small incidental cases like this, but such a massive populational shift that comes from something of not just the snap, but also the blip, um, is... Um, that, that's the kind of thing where, like, that whole new worlds of case law get written out of something like that. So, like... And I don't know if, like, I forget if John Grisham's still around or not. If he is, is John Grisham still around? Yep, he is still around. He's also still 60, still like 66. Like, like, that's the kind of crap where I'm like, um, I almost like, hey, like, Marvel going, like, Marvel calling John Grisham saying, hey, you, you want to write a tie-in novel to the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Trying to like, you get the right the the I need, we'd like you to we'd pay you all the money to write a lawyer book about um dealing with the blip. Admittedly, the response from Don Grisham could very easily be, "You don't have enough money to get me to write that." Not because it's not an infinite, it's not a potentially interesting book, but it's a really complicated mess that I don't know if I could properly figure out admittedly to which um kevin fahey or whoever it is at marvel who's responsible for coming up with this would go we're disney we have all of the money all of it we have scrooge mcduck's actual money bin filled with actual money and that's only a fraction of what we possess <laughs> um but seriously uh like that 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 is the kind of legal, like, buster cluck again to use that term, which coming from the perspective of a very geeky person who is on the autism spectrum and enjoys breaking down minutia, hence the whole name of this channel in the first place. I enjoy. I, I feel I could enjoy looking at from afar, but would never, ever, ever 
want to encounter in real life. I would ne you couldn't pay me to have to deal with that in reality. Like, there's the no amount of money in the world could pay me to have to try and clear up that rat's nest of various issues um, with actual lives, property, and possess and um, possessions at stake. But it's fiction. So you have a lower stakes opportunity to figure out this to figure out this crap. Um, but yeah, when like that is to a certain degree where this stumbles is for all of the for for the field of rakes that hap, that um the civil war comics event walked into due to its uneven representations of what the superhero registration act was and how it was enforced and by and by whom and on whom and why um to a degree um the blip make generates a similar field of rakes but without having but the good news is is it doesn't generate it, it's it generated this field of rakes on purpose um it with the SHRA the that field of rakes was generated again by uneven by as i mentioned in my video on the topic basically Lack of communication when writing, a failure to hash out what exactly the SHRA was in the first place, and uneven depictions of how it was going to be enforced, not helped by the fact that, let's, let's wait, Mark Millar being the person in charge means that the focus is going to be on big, sweeping, cinematic story events and less on um, trying to keep this consistent. And... Whatever will create, whatever will further the conflict and lead to big fights is better than actually, um, than a reasonably put together law necessarily. That sort of thing. Whereas this, with this, I feels like Marvel is figuring out the blip in real time, real time to a certain extent, the same way that people in the Marvel universe, which I think is a point in their on the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The, char the characters in universe would be figuring this out, which I think is a point in their favor in the sense that if the way that it's being depicted and the way that people are trying to resolve it feels uneven and awkward and messy, it's like, if this was happening in real life, God forbid, um, it would probably be the exact same way. And I can cut it some slack for that. So I'm looking forward to seeing where things are with Loki, recognizing the fact that Loki is not going to touch on the blip that much. And we don't have release dates yet. We don't also, we don't have release dates yet for the She-Hulk series. I don't think, um, Yeah, She-Hulk isn't due out until next year, so like they're probably filming it, but we we don't have an explanation for what's going to happen there yet, or or at least any answers as to what the MCU will do with the blip in that show. We'll have to wait, and other than that, for like this year, we've got Loki, we have Black Widow have the eternals um which are like I'm, I'm looking forward to watching those shows and those movies but um i can feel like the rest of the answer is as far as for how the blip will actually pan out are a long ways off but in any case i am definitely looking forward to loki next month i am very glad for watching the shows oh one other point, which I think this show stumbles, and this one is also this one. Is, this one ain't their fault at all. Um, from from the way that the camps for the um, GRC is created for the returners for for the uh, remainers, 
we're getting sent home are written. It's implied, and I believe was meant to have them be crowded, you know, to have them be overcrowded, like tent cities or that sort of thing. Something like what you see with refugee camps in depictions of UN refugee camps across the world. And, well, COVID-19 happened, so you can't do, so you can't shoot overcrowded shit. Um, because we, you're, we're, we're trying to maintain safety protocols. Like, there's a party scene in this movie, which has a bunch of people on the dance floor. And I'm like, like looking at this, like, in retrospect and going, okay, they shot this during COVID. How the hell did they get away with this? Because they got people, like, people who aren't socially distancing while they're dancing. I'll just, I'll say that. Uh, and I think, like, when this was written, COVID wasn't happening, or this wasn't expected to be as, as much of an issue. That, and so the thought was, okay, we can have these big crowded refugee camps to get across what the Flag Smashers are dealing with, where they're recruiting from, and that sort of thing. And it never really panned out that way because, again, you, you got you got to be safe, and I can't fault them for that, but I can definitely see where it caused wrinkles. And with that, again, looking forward to Loki and looking forward to the future installments of the MCU. I am... I am enjoying these experiments and, but they get like, you can definitely see the growing pains here. All both of these shows. Falcon and the Winter Soldier could have done a little more time or with like a, a double length series finale. Much as what we got with uh, the last episode of WandaVision. Other, otherwise it worked out all right. And there's definitely some lessons and takeaways they can bring from how these were written and produced and that sort of thing. And I think the next wave of these series, not necessarily Loki, but like when we start, like when they start principal for, you know, um, she Hulk and that sort of thing. I'm interested in seeing where those go in terms of, uh, in terms of how they fare and how their narrative presentation don't go. Because, like, if the Netflix series were, a, like, an episode or two too long and a little over and a little overstretched, these definitely feel a little overcrowded. And I suspect, like, whatever the next generation of these are, whatever the next wave is going to... I hope they hit that happy medium in terms of length to narrative. And we'll see when those come out. And... Once Loki finishes, I'll do another video on that then. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. <laughs>